everyone, today I'd like to show you a vocal chain I recently used in a mix in Logic Pro. I'd like to know what you think about it, and let's start off by listening to the raw version versus the mixed version. We're going to be focusing on two vocal tracks, which is the lead vocal track and the ad libs. They have basically pretty much the same order of plugins. And so basically I start by removing the noise because I know that it was recorded not in a professional uh, studio. So it's kind of like a mild setting above 10. Then of course we have mouth the click plugin to get rid of the clicks, which is obviously essential. And then I put the sibilance plugin. So I de-asked the raw vocals so that I already have kind of a prepared version, which later I'm going to put on Melodyne and Autotune on. Then, of course, I have the Melodyne. You really have to be careful because you need to know the, the correct scale. So I have B minor and you have to be really careful with the BPM. So it has to be correct. And often Melodyne changes the scale itself. If you have like the wrong notes here, your vocals are going to be messed up. So really, make sure the scale is correct. I have B minor and what I did is basically I had the following settings. I made quiet notes louder and loud notes quieter just a bit. The groove intensity is like around 10 which is really really mild. The most important setting is here because the raw recording is kind of off the key in several places and off notes. I had to pitch center the, the vocals. Also pitch drift I change it by 50%. These are kind of extreme settings. And if you have like a perfect recording, perfect recording of vocals, then most likely you don't need it. But on this type of track, I really needed this. And also my goal was to make really digitalized voice. So these settings are perfect for me. Also, you can see, I can show you like, if I get it back to the original version, you can see how some notes are off the grid. And that's why I prefer to keep it somewhere like this. Now that I worked with all the notes in Melodyne and made sure that they're all correct in the right scale, then only then I put autotune on. And here are their settings for my autotune. <laughs> I think it sounds kind of organic, especially regarding the genre. Then I EQ'd the vocal, so I uh, just cut off everything below 160. Already at this stage, I increased the high frequencies to add more brightness, sparkle, and air to the vocals. Basically, let me show you, you can work manually with any type of frequency and you can listen to them individually and for example if there's a certain frequency you don't like you can just decrease it or if there's a certain frequency you like you can increase it so for example yeah just like this then after uh, Pro-Q3, I have this equalizer by Waves. I worked here with the middle frequencies and with the high frequencies. And again, I exaggerated the higher frequencies, as you can see, because for this particular track, I really needed the high frequencies to be very distinct. That's exactly how you get this kind of bright, sparkling, airy vocals. The next one is the saturator with this kind of settings. And actually, I don't want to have Ozone 11 here, it's supposed to be here. Basically, that's the chain for the vocals. As you can see, the vocal chain for the ad-libs is pretty much the same, except for some 
differences. For example, the auto tune here, the return speed is two to make the setting even more extreme, which is totally fine for the ad libs. I had to automate some of the game because some of the backs were louder or quieter. So in order to uh, have the same volume, to maintain the same volume, I did some automation of the game. For example, like this. Also, I put the warm telephone effect on this smooth operator plugin by Baby Audio. Let's hear how it sounds without the effect. And with the effect. The rest is the same. I have the same equalizer with the same settings and the saturator. Also, what I did with the ad-libs uh, at the end of the song is I pitched them in order not to have the song as monotonous as it might be. And the pitched ad-libs sound like this. With the vocals and with the instrumental. Also, for the very last part of the course, I copied the lead vocal track and also pitched it to have like the double vocal. And the part sounds like this. Let me know if you think if it sounds okay or not. Also, a great thing with the Melodyne as long as your scale is correct, is that you can basically manipulate some notes and change the melody. For example, the very last part of the chorus sounded like this. And at the end of the song, I made it sound like this. As you can see, I changed the very last word to a higher note. And I think it is kind of a good ending. Okay, now as I'm done with this stage, I'm gonna be working with dynamics and space. And for that, I love to use sends. So as for our main vocal track, I send it to this delay. And like with this type of settings, nothing too crazy. Just make sure that the delay time corresponds to your BPM. For the backs, I used another type of delay ping pong delay and it basically automatically pans it back to your left and right. So as you can see I have different sense because I chose to have different type of delay for the main vocal track and for the backs. But now as I'm gonna put the same type of compression and other effects on all the vocal chains, I grouped all my vocals as you can see and the group is called box. And now I have a sound on the first buzz. And here I have this type of compression. So I just increased the volume of the vocal group by three decibels just to show better how the compressor works. So I have this chain of compressors. And let's see. Yes, Okay, then I added some fresh air, also some mild settings because I already increased high frequencies by two equalizers. The last comes another DSR because after all these effects and after increasing the high frequencies, I prefer to put another DSR. That was not very representative because in this particular part there are not so many sounds, but still we have like another verse in this track. Since I decided to have one reverb for all the vocal tracks, I also send it onto the third bus where I have this type of reverb with this kind of settings. Now let's see what I did with the instrumental. So as I only have one track of the instrumental, I wasn't able to do much with this, but as you can see the waveform, which is kind of crazy, I had to decrease the gain 
by 7 dB, a very crucial point in order to make your vocals sit in the mix is the side chaining and ducking the frequencies which collide, which mask. So basically, let me show you first. So here you can see the frequencies which mask uh, and whenever the vocals at these particular frequencies come in, the instrumental ducks, you also have to make sure that the ducking is not extreme because there's going to be a pumping effect and it's going to be too obvious that the frequencies become quieter. So basically the range is just 1.5 dB, which is really mild, and it helps to also kind of glue together the voice and the instrumental. So I haven't done any mastering yet, but the first steps would be the gluing compressor. So now we compress not only the vocals, but we already tried to compress the instrumental with the vocals. <laughs> Then to give some more life to the mix, I used this saturator and I added 30% of drag warm tape onto the lows and onto the highs. I haven't worked with the stereo Im imaging yet, but I'd imagine to actually to start imaging everything above 300 because we don't need to stereo imaging like bass and kick because bass and kick should always be in the middle. But let's see. Okay, I'd also like to check whether it's monocompatible or not with this meter, correlation meter. Okay, as you can see, we have a problem here, at least at the beginning of the beat, that it's definitely not monocompatible because it falls below zero. So let's try to work with that and let's see if, if it's just the beginning or probably the end as well. So let's put the correlation meter. As I can see, we could either split these parts and add it onto a new track and to try to kind of make it monocompatible because other parts actually seem to be okay. I would really love to add another track because I wouldn't like to make this part even more mono because Otherwise, they're just gonna lose their width, I guess. So, let's do it like this. Okay, 
Okay. We really have to be careful with that because if we make it weigh too much mono, then it's just gonna lose its width and it's gonna be very dull and boring. <laughs> Когда тебя вижу, я не могу больше думать. Мысли только о тебе меня погубят. Now we fix this. All right. Also, it's important to check the loudness of our mix and what we basically have now. Я считаю это не минут. Не могу о тебе думать. Мы с тобой только во снах теперь. Но не могу попасть в снах тебе. Я считаю это не минут. Не могу о тебе думать. Actually, the integrated volume is also perfectly fine. We can make the mix even louder with limiter. Мы с тобой только во снах теперь, но не могу подать знак тебе. Я считаю не минут, не могу о тебе думать. Мы с тобой только во снах теперь, но не могу подать знак тебе. Я считаю не минут, не могу о тебе думать. Мы с тобой только во снах теперь, но не могу подать знак тебе. Я считаю не минут, не могу о тебе думать. So thank you very much for watching and I'd appreciate any of your advice, any recommendations. Maybe you'd like to share uh, what kind of vocal change you prefer, maybe not in this particular order which I showed. Also, um, I think I used an incorrect term for ad-libs and since English is my native language, I hope you're gonna forgive me for this. And thank you very much for watching. Bye!